How you doing? My name is Dante Luna, and this is the Spooky World Special. I'm gonna take you on an inside look of Spooky World. Spooky World is a, is a theme park sort of looking scary haunted place. Uh, it's outside of Boston, it's um, in New Hampshire, it's really outside of Boston, but if you anywhere from the Boston area, you really, you've heard about Spooky World at least once. And so, I'm gonna take you into a park that, um, that, uh, that, that's made and it was built just to scare people. I mean, I think just getting there is scary alone, because it's bird. I can't even see where the street turns. It's that serious. It's like look at that. It's blind the whole way, and then out of nowhere, this guy comes. And Bert, you're supposed to be wearing glasses, right? Uh, yeah, man. I'm like basically, if I look to Dante right now, I can't see. So. Uh, oh, oh snap! Shit, Stop sign. Happens. Yo, you see what I'm saying, man? You see what I'm talking about, man? We got away. It's spooky world. We might not even get to spooky world. Unbelievable. Stop signs coming out. Stop sign just grew up out the ground, man. You believe that? I've been in the Halloween and haunt industry for about 20 years now, and uh, I design haunted events. I, I help build them, decorate them. I've always been a fan of, of uh, horror movies. Just I've always loved it. Um, when I was younger, during Halloween, I'd always dress up as the scary character to try and scare people in my neighborhood, scare my parents, my teachers. And um, I had a friend that was working at a local haunted house, and he said, you know, give, it this, give it a shot, come out and check it out. And I've been hooked ever since. And uh, it's just, it, it's a passion of mine. It's something I think about every day. And, um, you know, it's, it's gone from me just acting in haunts to, to actually being part of design teams. And then now where I am is overseeing the majority of what happens at the park. It was probably about 10 years ago when I was really given the opportunity. And, there's an event in Green Bay called Terror on the Fox, and uh, it was voted the number one charity haunted house in the country last year. And um, that event, uh, my partners and I created that event and we ran it. So it was our first real opportunity for us to be in the driver's seat and make the decisions that needed to happen to make it a successful event. Uh, leading up to that, I was always part of the design crew, but I wasn't at the upper uh, management level where I could make the decisions on, on what had to happen or needed to happen. So I, I live and sleep and breathe this. It's, uh, uh, I work year round for 19 days. We get to scare people, they run and hide, and then we get to visit them at home afterwards and crawl out from under their bed and really get them. So it's a matter of, you know, you, you can always find the right people. Uh, we have people here that are really good at sound and lighting. That's their niche. We have people that are good at, at building. We have people that are good at painting. And it, it really does take a, a group of individuals to pull this off. But we actually, believe it or not, start planning during the season, during October right now. We take a lot of notes as to what's working, what's not working. You know, um, if we decide something to be scary and we don't think it's scaring people, right way we kind of keep an eye on it watch it to see what we can tweak or what we can do to change it or make it better so that people do get scared by it um, so it definitely starts now for next year uh, we'll tear down it'll take us till the end of November to tear down and then you know we'll have a little bit of time off to spend with family but the, the process never ends we're always in contact with each other um, if we're driving down the road and we get an idea because we see a graveyard or an old house you know, we jot our ideas down. We're always in contact with each other. So, it um, at any given time, you could be, you know, you have uh, an idea pop into your head as to what you're going to do for next year. And um, a lot of the processes that happen during the off season are the marketing decisions that happen. You know, what worked last year, what didn't work, and we, we pay very close attention to that because we want to make sure we get the word out. Um, also. What are our themes going to be? If we're changing our themes, what else do we have to change? Um, 
instance, if we have an old mansion theme and we change it to a hospital theme, that means we have to change all the costumes, all the makeup, all the prosthetics. So there's a lot that goes with any decision that you make. You really have to look at every aspect when you do. The Spooky World's been around for, I, I believe, about 17 years. Um, it might be a little bit longer than that. It had its roots in Berlin, Mass, is where it started, and um, they're really well known for their hayride there and um, having that outdoor atmosphere, you know, which we think is very important. And, you know, that's why we have one of our haunts in the woods. Um, but Spooky World really did pave the way for a lot of haunts, especially in the northeast part of the country, and um, be, very quickly became a really well-known name in this part of the country. You know, you tell people you're doing a Halloween event, they're like, oh, like Spooky World? You know, that's the first thing they say. And um, so it definitely has a history. People know the name. And uh, we started Nightmare New England last year, and the owners have been trying, the owners of Nightmare New England in Mouse Fenway Park have been trying to purchase Spooky World for a few years. And um, it, all, it all worked out last year. And it was run somewhere else last year, but this year we brought it here, combined it with what we're doing at Nightmare New England to offer up one of the largest Halloween events in the country, definitely the largest in New England. Here at the park, we have about 130 actors a night on average that are acting. Um, that's between the haunted houses and the midway actors that roam all, all throughout the park. Um, on top of that, we have firefighters, we have EMTs, uh, there's some security staff on site, there's police on site. Uh, then you're looking at your ticketing, so it's the people selling the tickets, it's the people taking the tickets, trash detail. All the managers, and by the time we're sudden done, there's about 260 to 270 people that work here a night just to make the Halloween event happen. Um, I like this one a lot, Raven's Claw. Raven's Claw is the one I laid out and designed, and um, the outdoor aspect of it. People in New England love the outdoor aspect to to Raven's Claw, so to be able to have the opportunity to do an outdoor haunt was a, was a great opportunity. Sleep Stalkers, I guess, would be my next one, just because that when I design haunts, that's my style of haunting. A uh, lot of detail, a lot of impact scares, and making people feel uncomfortable. And, and I think Sleep Stalkers definitely does that. A lot of what I know here is self-taught. I have a background in theater, so that building and lighting design really helped play a role. But um, there, are, there are not college courses you can go to to do haunted houses. Um, there are a lot of conventions throughout the year that you can attend that um, people teach. I take plenty of classes. I teach plenty of classes. Um, but it's a matter of have, finding the people that really love Halloween and then finding what their niche is with what you're doing. Get as much experience as you can. You know, work with local haunted houses if you have the opportunity to work. You know, helping them set up, helping them tear down. If you have the opportunity to act during October, uh, that's great too. The more you're around it, and the more time you can spend to see the the inner workings, uh, the better off you're going to be. There's, um, you know, a lot of different styles of haunts and events in the country, and um, you know, if you have the opportunity that's your biggest learning experience is to be with a haunt really pay attention and learn and see it. a lot of people don't see what goes into um, the building of it or what goes into the design stage or process of it so it's um, you know it, it, it's interesting you know, people they don't realize that there's a, an industry out there for this and um, once you kind of educate them a little bit on it they see how big it is and, and what a big impact it makes on Halloween as well. I think you really need to be passionate about what you do. You know, if you work a 16 or 18 hour day and you go home at night with a smile on your face, I think you know it's it, it's your passion and it's, it's something that you love to do. And, um, you know, other than you know my wife getting a little mad at me when I talk about Halloween during Christmas, um, you know, it is something that's on my mind every day and it, it is something I very, very much love to do.